This universe is vast and consists of so many strange objects on Earth and above the Earth. Scientists are curious to know about these strange objects and behaviors, but in their missions, they noticed something that slowed down the spacecraft. NASA launched a mission recently to find out about the strange thing that was slowing the spacecraft, and this led to some breathtaking scenes. Welcome to Cosmos Lab, your one station for all the news from space. Join us in today's video to find out all about the strange incidents happening above us. There's no questioning the fact that the universe is vast, and strange things are happening in space above us all the time. Ranging from rogue planet with auroras to the most bizarre star, the universe consists of countless strange things. One strange anomaly has been observed by the spacecrafts that slowed them down. This strange thing is a funnel-shaped breach in our planet's magnetic field that passes overhead at local noon when the sun is at its highest point. This gap is called the polar cusp, and it happens right above the North Pole. Now, Earth's magnetic field protects us from the harsh solar winds, but those winds can enter through the polar cusp and allow the solar wind a direct line of access to Earth's atmosphere. The solar wind is the stream of charged particles spewing off the sun, and it impairs radio and GPS transmissions that pass across it. The signals behave strangely, but there is something else that the scientists and spacecraft operators noticed in this region. The polar cusp is even more strange in that when spacecrafts pass through it, they slow down for no apparent reason. The U.S. Space Agency believes the extra mass is supported by something we can't see or understand, and to study the anomaly, NASA has launched a mission, the CREX-2. According to the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, something invisible supports that extra mass, and the CREX-2 mission aims to figure out exactly what it is. Mark Conde, a physicist at the University of Alaska Fairbanks, and the principal investigator for NASA's CREX-2 said, at around 250 miles above Earth, spacecrafts feel more drag, sort of like they've hit a speed bump. This is because the air near the cusp is noticeably denser than the air elsewhere in the spacecraft's orbit around Earth. But no one knows why or how it happened. Scientists seek to anticipate changes in spacecraft's trajectories by knowing the forces at work at the cusp. To study the behavior, on December 1st of 2021, the CREX-2 payload was successfully launched from the Andoya Space Center in Norway. CREX-2, or CUSP Region Experiment 2, is designed to measure the numerous factors that could potentially explain how the cusp's dense air stays suspended. Several types of equipment on board the rocket are meant to measure things like electrically charged particles, which could be sustaining the denser air. It also released colorful vapors into the sky so scientists could attempt to measure wind speeds. According to NASA, while the density of the Earth's atmosphere reduces significantly as one rises in altitude, it remains consistent horizontally. That is, the atmosphere is nearly the same density around the world at any given altitude, except in the cusp, where 250 miles overhead, there's a pocket of air roughly one and a half times denser than other air at that altitude. Now, the researchers are focused on this area of about 250 miles high. Conde said, you can't just increase the mass in the region by a factor of 1.5 and do nothing else or the sky will fall. Through the mission, scientists can try and sort out which one is doing the work. NASA explains electric and magnetic effects in the ionosphere, which is the layer of Earth's upper atmosphere that is ionized by the sun and hence contains electrically charged particles, as one possibility. The denser air may be supported indirectly by electrodynamics, or it could be heated causing vertical winds to hold the dense air aloft. The onboard equipment on CREX-2 was for measuring these impacts. Another possibility is that the air in this cusp's vertical column is denser than the air around it. 
the dense air 250 miles high would remain buoyant if stacked atop heavier air. The column of heavier air, on the other hand, should produce horizontal or even vortex-like winds, which CREX-2 is programmed to detect. The CREX, however, detected it in style. You can see the amazing photograph taken, and this explains 20 soda cans. The rocket ejected 20 soda can-sized canisters into the cusp after launch. Each canister had its own small rocket motor and was ejected in four directions. NASA explained the canisters are timed to rupture at different altitudes. When they burst, they'll release vapor traces, particles often found in firework displays, which glow by scattering sunlight or upon exposure to oxygen, and a three-dimensional grid in the sky. The wind will paint the sky with these glowing clouds, revealing how air moves in this unusual section of the atmosphere. The vapors were mapped by a team of scientists stationed across Scandinavia. They were photographed for almost 30 minutes, and a student scientist even flew a plane from Yekjavik, Iceland, to document them. Because the tracers had to be visible in the sky, the scientists only had a brief window to finish the experiment. The cargo was transported to an apogee of 392 miles by the four-stage Oracle 4 sounding rocket. According to the first reports, the flight was a success and the vapor ampules operated as expected. Data from the vapor imaging team was particularly useful. The mission was not as easy to perform as it seems. This part of the endeavor necessitates a lot of planning. Conde explained, it's quite a big chess game. To gain a complete picture of the wind patterns, the crew needs to examine the tracers from a variety of angles. Over the span of 20 to 30 minutes, scientists, some of whom were graduate students, were stationed throughout Scandinavia to photograph the tracers. Before the launch, the NASA scientists had explained that there are a few Goldilocks requirements for the launch. The cusp is only visible around local noon and the sky must be dark to see the tracers glow. That's why CREX-2 was launched in the middle of the winter when there is very little sunlight at these far northern latitudes. Conde said, we are threading a needle. We get about an hour or two each day when conditions are suitable to do the experiment. And at least two of the stations needed a clear view of the tracers for sufficient data collection. CREX-2 first aimed to learn more about the dynamics in the CUSP as part of the Grand Challenge Initiative, or CUSP, in 2019. Despite the fact that all systems were ready for launch, the mission never took off. As a result of the lack of solar activity at the time, space weather conditions were unsuitable for the mission during the initial launch window. The COVID-19 outbreak delayed its departure even more. CREX-2 is set to fly again after an almost two-year break in the hopes of solving questions regarding the cusp. The crew is upbeat because the sun is in a more active phase of its natural cycle this time, increasing the likelihood that space weather conditions would be good for their mission to examine an extremely dense part of the atmosphere. That explains all the struggle. The rocket business is a high-stakes game, Condi said. You'll spend two or three years developing a payload, but ultimately, it all comes down to choosing when to press the button to capture the science you want. Sometimes that moment doesn't arrive. Conde and the CREX2 team are eager for another opportunity to launch. Honestly, it feels amazing, Conde said, to finally be trying again. I'm not quite sure I have the words for it. Mark Conde said, the rocket business is a high stakes game you'll spend two or three years developing a payload, but ultimately, it all comes down to choosing when to press the button to capture the science you want. Sometimes that moment doesn't arrive. Condi and the CREX2 team were eager for this new opportunity to launch. He said, Honestly, it feels amazing to finally be trying again. I'm not quite sure I have the words for it. The experiment was led by UAF, which involved a large team of scientists, engineers, and students from several countries. UAF personnel include graduate student Jason Arns, who photographed the experiment from aboard a NASA Gulfstream 4 that flew from Iceland. 
and UAF graduate student Matthew Blandin, who photographed the experiment from Ne Elisund, a small community on Norway's Svalbard archipelago. To see in a very direct way the things we talk about in class and learn in a formal academic setting, to see it play out in real time, out in the field, is kind of an experience that really I didn't expect to have," said Westerland, who was assigned to the telemetry room and had the authority to scrub the launch if readings didn't look right. But all of a sudden, it's happening, and it's really something else. According to UAF, CREX-2 is the last of nine launches in an international research effort, the Grand Challenge Cusp. Other nations that have launched experiments in the coordinated CUSP research effort include England, Norway, Canada, and Japan. All of the launches took place from Andoya, Norway, or Ne Elisund, Svalbard, with ground and aircraft observations taken from a variety of locations throughout the Scandinavian Arctic. With that, we have come to the end of our video. This space is filled with such anomalies and the scientists are eager to find as much as they can about the strange behaviors. This was a little experiment, but it is going to open a variety of opportunities for other space missions. What do you think about the cusps and the amazing photographs taken? Do you have your own theory for this? Share with us in the comments section below. If you like the content, do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon for the update on upcoming space videos. Until then, have a great day and thank you for watching.